Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Jessica. Tonight we're making a really simple, easy, delicious raw vegan cheesecake. Uh, we're gonna go live at seven o'clock, so I'm just gonna give everyone a few, t few minutes to find us and then we'll get started. So stay tuned and enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome. Just giving everyone like another minute. We're gonna start at seven. Almost seven, almost seven, like two minutes. Um, I'm Jessica. I am an integrative nutrition health coach and I do a lot of the healthier cooking demonstrations uh, here with libraries, Mastic Mariches. Tonight we're making a raw vegan cheesecake, which is really super simple, delicious, um, and a healthier version than a cheesecake. And maybe someone is dairy-free or has an allergy, um, gluten-free, it's dairy-free, and it's made with a few simple ingredients. So we'll get started in a, in a minute. I'll be right back. And you'll also get the recipe right after this. So don't worry about writing anything down. I'll make sure to put it in the comments below. seven o'clock according to my watch. So we'll get started. Like I said, we're going to do a raw vegan cheesecake tonight. Even if you're not dairy free or gluten free, I think you'll still enjoy this recipe. It's really simple. It's great for the holidays um, or every day, but I know that I'm cooking a lot for the holidays. Uh, so then I look for like a simpler dessert or just a way to save time. So this is raw. You don't have to cook it. You also can make it ahead of time and keep it in the freezer. So for me, that's time saving. It's just, um, again, something quick and easy. And then this way I don't have to worry about it the day before the holiday or even the day of. Um, and it's also a nice treat to keep in the freezer. If you have leftovers, uh, they keep up really well in the in the fridge or the freezer so you could use both but we're only using a few ingredients so hopefully you have most of them in your pantry and again if you guys have any questions feel free to comment below I'm going to be posting the recipe right after so you definitely can try this at home but to start with the crust it's really simple we're using dates so we have um, just organic medjool dates we're using and then I'm using raw almonds if you don't like almonds, you could use almonds or you could use pecans. So it's quite versatile with whatever nut you would like. Um, we're also using cashews for the filling. So hopefully no one has allergies, but again, I'll give you some different options throughout the live. So we'll get started. You need a food processor or a blender for this. So I do have a food processor right here. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. So you guys can see 
Really easy, a cup of pitted dates and then a cup of raw walnuts. So I find, I don't know, I love my food processor, that's why I'm using it. You can use a blender if you want. You really can't make this by hand, um, but if you don't have a blender or a food processor, hopefully you could get one not too expensive. I'm sure Amazon has one. So you wanna make sure that your nuts are raw, there's no added oils, we don't want any salt, so just make sure that they are raw. So we're just doing a cup. And the sugar in this is coming from the dates. And then also we have some organic maple syrup we're gonna add into the filling. All right, so we're gonna put the raw walnuts in there. And then your dates, make sure to pit them. Um, or you could buy pitted dates, but I love dates. Um, if you've never had one, I highly recommend. If you're craving something sweet at night, sometimes I want something sweet after dinner. I'll just eat most likely two dates. Um, you know, they are going to be higher in sugar since they are a dried fruit, but they're delicious, have a lot of vitamins and minerals, and um, if you eat two, it's a good serving size. <clears throat> And you want your dates to be quite soft. Sometimes dates will get dry. You could always soak them in some water if you would like, um, you know, in case they get dry. Because what we're going to do for the crust, we're just blending these two ingredients in the food processor. And as you blend it, it's going to create almost like a sticky ball. Um, and this is going to be the crust. So it's going to hold together really well. This way you don't have to worry about anything falling up, falling apart. <clears throat> and also another um, tip is that if this is very dry and your dates are dry, you could always add a little water to this to help combine. Um, and if you've ever made, like if you've ever seen those date bites or energy bites, a lot of those energy bites are made with dates. So this is pretty pretty much the same thing, except we're going to put it in a pan and make it into a crust. So we want a cup. Oh, so someone just came late. We are making a raw vegan cheesecake. So I'm starting with the crust here. I have a food processor. We're just combining a cup of raw, a cup of raw walnuts and a cu cup of pitted dates. So we're gonna make our crust now. I'm also going to post this recipe in the comments right after. So if you came late, it will be posted there. And I love this recipe too because you can make it your own. Um, I'll show this at the end, but we can make them into little muffins. So like individual cheesecakes, or we could make them into one um, larger pie, but you could do add-ons like some peanut butter or chocolate chips, um, some fresh fruit. So there's a little, a lot of different variety that you could do based on what you enjoy. So we're just gonna combine this. It's gonna be a lot loud for a little bit. We're gonna start making our crust. looks like along the way because it does take a few minutes for it to combine because this part is really important. You don't want your crust to be crumbly or fall apart. So you could see here, um, really it's not all incorporated. You also could take your fingers and just see if it's sticky. So I could tell that it's really not incorporated. It's not sticky enough. So we want to put it on again. So I'm gonna process it for a few minutes, and then also you're gonna see it will, a ball will start to form, and that's when you know it's ready. So you probably saw 
saw, saw, I just added a little water. It was less than a tablespoon, just to make sure that we could start incorporating this. And now you know that this is almost ready because see how it's starting to come together. It stays together. I'm gonna process this for like one more minute and then we will be ready to make our crust. Perfect. So our crust is done. How easy is that? Um, two ingredients, walnuts and dates. So now we're going to press it in a pan. Um, you have a few options depending on what you would like to do. This is a um, regular heat pan. I've done this in about an eight by eight. So this is probably about an eight inch round. Um, <clears throat> this is just easy to get it um, you know, off or out of the pan. So that's why I choose to use a, I think it's called a spring form. And then the other one is a muffin tin. You could of course do these into mini muffins if you wanted to, or mini cheesecakes. Just take you a little longer. If you're going to use the muffin pan, we would do about a tablespoon of crust in each one. Um, a tip to get these out of the muffin pan easier. You can do parchment paper and cut it into strips and just put like two strips um, in each one. And then once it's frozen, it will be easy to get it out or just use a butter knife. So today I'm just gonna do, um, I'm gonna show you what they look like in the muffin pan, but I'm just gonna do a um, round cake pan. <clears throat> So you just want to make sure that this is in correctly. So it's in. I'm just going to uh, grease this a, with a little coconut oil. Because we don't want anything to stick. <clears throat> so I'm just going to grease the bottom. The dates are great because they are... Um, they don't stick a lot so it's easy to get out and then also be mindful that this is going to be frozen so it's a lot easier to work with i always recommend um having it frozen and then pop it out and you could always place it back in the freezer or if you're going to eat it right away um you could put it in the refrigerator as well okay i'm just going to do the sides a little bit tried with muffin tins, but you could probably use those wrappers um, as well as kind of like a mess free. I also like them in the muffin size because I feel like it's good portion control. This way you don't overeat. You know that you have one and that's it. All right, so we're going to put the crust in the pan first. If I can get this out. And then don't put your food processor in the uh, sink because we're going to actually use the same food processor to make the filling. Which, if anyone has ever seen any of my lives, you know how much I don't really love to do dishes. And I'm all about making things easy. The less dishes you have to do, the less time you're spending cleaning. So I'm all about convenience. So we're just pressing this into the pan. Um, you can see you want to do your best in creating an even, uh, even uh, layer. So again, for those of you, there's people joining us now. Uh, my crust, we're making a raw vegan cheesecake and the crust is just some dates. So we did a cup of pitted dates and a cup of raw walnuts. I'm going to post the recipe right after this as well so you guys can make it. All right, so you just wanna, and you could create a little crust if you want to. Honestly, it's up to you. Um, you could just eat the crust if you didn't wanna make the cheesecake. Uh, just roll it into little balls. 
So you'll see, I'm just pressing it in. We're just making a crust. It's all sticking together, which is quite convenient. So you want it to be that sticky ball before you press it into the pan. And then remember, you could always add a little water. You don't want to add too much to the date and walnut mixture because then it will just be too wet. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty good. I'm just going to wash my hands. So again, no oven needed. We're just going to pop this in the freezer to set a little bit while we're making our filling. So super easy. Can you guys see? Oh, the lighting is bad there. Um, dates, walnuts, we are putting it in the freezer. All right, so hello, Kelly, welcome. So now the filling. And the filling's super simple. A few ingredients. We're doing raw cashews. First thing that you have to do is soak them. So cashews get extremely creamy when you soak them. Um, I love to use them in dressings and then also in this raw cheesecake. So um, I did a cup and a half one and a half cups of raw cashews. Again, no oils, no added salt, nothing, just raw cashews. So a cup and a half. I love using these mason jars as well because there's the measuring right on the side, which you probably can't say, but cup and a half, cover it with water. Then I keep it in my fridge overnight uh, to let it soak. And it could soak for a few days as well. Um, I would say this is probably like the one thing that you have to remember because you need to soak your cashews. Um, if you forgot, you could always, <coughs> excuse me, put them in boiling water and that's an option for you as well in case you forget to soak your cashews. So we want to make sure that we're going to rinse our cashews. So I'm just going to, my hands are slippery because of the so we're just going to rinse our cashews. And you're always going to soak your almonds, your cashews, um, if you're making your own nut milks as well. So you wanna make sure that they're quite uh, soft. And this way, again, it's gonna make a really creamy and delicious cheesecake. So we have our cashews. Again, you don't have to clean this. You could just wipe it down a little bit if you want, but really, there's not much in here. So we'll just wipe it down. Be careful of the blade, and obviously you don't want, which I got, um, you could just rinse this. Okay. So the blade is back in here. and a half soaked cashews right in here and then our rest of our ingredients I have a measuring cup right here we're doing lemon juice some maple syrup some full fat coconut milk and some coconut oil um, or I'm using MCT oil so I'll discuss that right now but we're doing a quarter of a cup lemon juice I'm like can you guys see this okay <clears throat> If you watch any of the other lives too, you know that I love this. Um, it's an organic, pure lemon juice. It's by this brand, Lakewood. If you do try to find it in the store, it's going to be in your shelf stable aisle. And then once you open it, you would have to put it in your fridge. But for me, it's just super time, cons uh, time saving. 
And then this way I don't have to always make sure that I have fresh lemons on hand. So I use a lot of lemon juice for the most part. I also love to add it into my water. It's great to help detoxify. Good for digestion, immune system. Uh, so then we're gonna add in some maple syrup. We're just doing about a half a cup. And you wanna make sure you're using a pure maple syrup. To me, the flavor and the quality is just worth the price or it's a little bit more expensive, but you can find it at places like Costco. So we're just putting this in here as well. All right. So we're going to use a full fat coconut milk. Um, this, you could use any brand really. I actually like this brand. I found it at Costco, it's Thai Kitchen. If you guys could see, you wanna make sure that it's unsweetened. Uh, typically they are, so no added sugar. And then you wanna make sure that it's full fat. The full fat is going to give you the thickness and the creaminess for the cheesecake. So we're just gonna open this. And we're gonna do about two thirds of a cup. You'll see in the store if you're looking for the coconut milk. I also, I wouldn't use like the coconut milk that you find in the refrigerator section because a lot of times that's really watered down. So highly suggest the cans a full fat coconut milk. That's going to give you your cheesecake, um, you know, not only flavor, but that creaminess that we all want in a cheesecake. Um, so you can see it's quite thick. And there's water in this too, but I found that this brand really is great. So we're doing about two thirds of a cup. I'm just gonna move this here, just so I can see. And you'll see on the, on the top will be more the fat, um, and then the bottom will be more of like the liquid. So you could always shake it before um, and you know mix it in but I just found that this brand is super creamy uh, because some of the brands also have, um, it'll be like much harder. And of course with the colder weather too, it will get hard. So um, we're using, it's probably about half of a can. And then the rest of that, it's like, all right, well, what are you gonna do with that? I'll put it in my coffee. So I'll blend it with my coffee in the morning in my magic bullet. Maybe I'll add in some cinnamon, um, some collagen powder I use, but whatever, it's still delicious. But you wanna make sure that you're using it up. It typically lasts a couple of days in the fridge. It's also great if you're making a stew or soup that has um, maybe a lot of like curry spices, it makes the soup and stew really creamy and more flavorful. So that's an idea to do with it as well. And then um, the last thing, we're using coconut oil. So we're doing a third cup. As you can see, I really don't have any coconut oil. So um, I typically always have coconut oil or something in the fridge or not in the fridge, shelf stable. MCT oil, which comes from coconut, uh, the way that it's processed, if you've never seen it, it just always stays a liquid. Um, so I'm gonna use this. I wouldn't suggest that you would need to buy this for this recipe because it's going to be more expensive. So I would just set, suggest getting the unrefined organic coconut um, oil from Costco or wherever you are. You just wanna make sure to melt it. So we're doing a third of a cup of the MCT oil. Hopefully everybody likes coconut, but I don't know. To me, I don't even like, it doesn't taste so coconut Wait, coconut -y. Um, I don't know, I love this recipe. My whole family loves it too. I'm just looking, I'm like, where is the one third? So you could see that this is completely liquid. <clears throat> So, 
Sometimes people use MCT oil. I'll mix it in my coffee, like say I'm fasting in the morning. Um, it's, it's a fad, so it helps you stay full and satiated. So you could always put it in your coffee if you wanted to. But again, it's going to be more expensive for this recipe. Just get an unrefined coconut uh, oil. So now we're adding our last piece, which is the coconut oil. And we're going to blend this up. Whoops, as I throw the spatula. All right. Super important, you want to make sure that this is fully blended because nobody, I mean, I don't know, maybe it would be good, um, but I don't want like chunks of cashew in my cheesecake. I want it to be really creamy and smooth. So I'm just kind of scraping down the sides and we're going to keep processing it until it's going to get smooth. Just be patient. Um, but you can see, I mean, this recipe took us less than a half hour. Don't have to cook anything, which is really nice. So I'm going to process it one more time. And it's really not that thick. Um, that is why we are going to place this back in the freezer to then let it set. It's going to take about six hours in the freezer. So again, if you're having people over or you're making this for a holiday, you might want to make it at least the day before, but you could make it a week before um, or longer than that. So let's process this one more time and I'll get the crust out of the freezer. So that should be pretty good. And at this point, um, taste it. I mean, there's nothing, obviously we're eating this raw, so there's nothing that would make you sick. It's really good, if I say so myself. Now, a few pointers. I have, now it's gonna add obviously calories and fat. I have added peanut butter to this, which is super delicious. If you're a peanut butter person, Tonight we're gonna to top it with some chocolate. That's another option. You could do fresh fruit. Um, but I would just say like, if you wanted to mix something in here, you could do uh, peanut butter or another type of nut butter. And then also it's gonna be of your preference. If you need it more sweet, then of course you could add more maple syrup. But I always suggest, you know, I mean, it depends on how much sugar you're intaking, but give it a try. Okay. So we have our crust. It was just, it's not really frozen, but it's just cold. And now we're just going to put our filling in here. So you'll see, it's kind of like a cake batter. careful of the blade and I am going to add some chocolate to this I'm definitely a chocolate person I'm not really a cheesecake person um, or a regular cheesecake person but this raw vegan cheesecake is delicious and I love adding some chocolate because again who doesn't like chocolate? Although I have met a few. 
And you can leave it plain as well. You could always serve this with some fresh fruit. That's another option. Or eat it just like this. So you just want to make sure that there's no air bu bubbles. And again, this was thin, right? So we're going to add this into the freezer. It's going to set for probably at least six hours. You could test it. Um, now we used our spring form pan, so it's going to be easy to get it out. You could have also put parchment paper on the bottom. That was another option. So I'm just going to put this to the side. I'll add it to the freezer. Um, next. And I'll show you, oh wait, we were gonna add some chocolate. Duh. All right, so I have, if you've never tried this, it's amazing, huge chocolate gems. Um, to tell you the truth, they are kind of expensive in the grocery store, but Costco had them, which hopefully they get it back in this um, year. So I'm just going to chop it up and you could use really any chocolate. So um, if you want chocolate. Okay. I'm glad that this recipe looks good. And again, right after this, I will post the recipe. You saw really simple, only a few ingredients. Hopefully you have most of it and really like all the ingredients. Yeah, really none of the ingredients go bad. So you could always keep them in your refrigerator or your pantry. So I'm just chopping these up. They're like, you can see little gems, so they're kind of big. <clears throat> and now, also I'll show you, you know, you could serve it frozen. I really, I love it in the refrigerator, I like that creamy texture. So if it's in the freezer and you're keeping it in the freezer, you do wanna make sure that you take it out. I would say it'd be like 20 minutes, a half hour, just let it sit out. Um, you know, not too long and depending on how hot your house is, but also you could keep it in the fridge. So I honestly, when I'm making a larger batch of this I will keep some in my fridge okay so we're just gonna add in the chocolate this looks very decadent I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. And that is it. So you guys can see. No, it's gonna like fall over. Um, but we're gonna just put this in the freezer for about six hours and then I'll show you what it's gonna look like. So I made a few so you guys could see um, the finished product. Product, yeah. Um, so these are the mini cheesecakes. These are the individual ones that I made with the muffin tins. Um, again, if you're trying to watch your portion or not overeat, this is a great way um, to make sure that you do so. So these were in the freezer and I've kind of just set, let them sit out. Um, so you could see the crust and then the filling gets obviously hard, creamy, stays together, and then bon appetit. So let me know if you guys make this, um, and you guys could probably see too, like these again came from the freezer, but they hold up really well, and um, the lighting is better there, <laughs> but they hold up really well, whoops. So there you could see. The crust and the little cheesecake. This this one was plain, the other ones were blueberry. But I'm gonna go post this recipe for you guys now. Definitely make this. Let me know what you think. Um, super easy, as you saw, only a few ingredients. Um, where can you find the recipe? I'm gonna post it right now, so give me 
five minutes, but I'll notify you. So I'll comment below once I post the recipe, but uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Have a wonderful night. I really appreciate you spending your Tuesday night with me and um, stay warm. So talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.